What's up y'all? I'm out here at the range today on what's ended up being a way more windy day than I anticipated. Luckily though, the temperature ain't too bad out here, so it shouldn't be nothing I can't handle to get a couple of tests done. And I think we're gonna start it out with the judge with some 410 triple alt buck. So we got the jelly contraption out here weighted down, so hopefully it don't get blown away with the chrono and two blocks of gel. Now these are freshly melted blocks of gel. As you can see, they are the B team, so they're a little bit yellow in color, but still pretty much nice and clear where we can see everything that goes on. As you can also see we are staying with the heavy clothing barrier for this one with the layer of denim layer of fleece and then two layers of the cotton t-shirt material and like i said what we're checking out here is some 410 rounds and to be more specific we're looking at the remington ultimate defense buckshot this is the three inch stuff the 410 three inch five pellet triple alt buck so this stuff is saying 1125 feet per second now this three inch i had never tested and these were actually sent to me by mike he wanted these tested specifically out of the six and a half inch judge i've actually got a couple of boxes of these and had planned on doing some other types of testing too so this should be a good one to start them off with like i say three inch this has got five pellets of triple alt buck there's your shell there now i brought these out just as a visual comparison this is the same thing only in the two and a half inch version with four pellets instead of five so the two and a half has got four pellets and has got a velocity on the box of 1225 the three inch which we're testing today has got five pellets so one extra pellet but it's less velocity these are saying 1125 so 100 foot per second less velocity with one extra pellet and then like i said he specifically asked for these to be tested out of this six and a half inch judge so that's what we're gonna run them out of today but i got a few different ways planned to test these things so let me get some stuff set up and let's check them out all right y'all let's see what we can do with these things now i moved up a little bit closer than i normally am normally i'm back at 10 feet right now i'm about five or six feet probably six feet where i'm standing only because i don't know what the spread on this thing's gonna be and i don't want to blast my chrono obviously I don't mind hitting the wooden dowels, but I definitely don't want to blast my chrono. So what I'm going to do, I've got three rounds in here. I'm going to run these things until they don't read. So we may get three rounds. We may get two. We may only get one, but uh, these things can be tricky and I don't want to stand out here all day just to get some speed. So I got three rounds. I'm going to do some speeds. Now for the jelly test, I'm going to do that from the same distance like this, like I say, five or six feet, but I'm also going to do a couple of different spreads on paper for y'all. I'll do a spread here at this same distance and then I'll probably probably go about uh, maybe five or six yards and see what the spread is on that. So let's get some speeds first. Like I say, I'm gonna start with these three rounds in here and we'll just see how many we actually get. So like I said, now the box was saying 1125. We're definitely not gonna see that out of this. I'll be greatly surprised if we do. We got 918. 827. and 887 so i would say all those are valid readings let's check the average on it all right so the five round average from those was 877 feet per second so definitely not the 1125 on the box 1150 whatever it was but that's really not shabby at all out of the six and a half inch revolver because you got to consider the combined weight of those pellets the, those pellets if i remember correctly when i did the two and a half i, I want to say they were around 65 grains or so a piece so you're talking about 320 330 grains combined on this thing if i'm doing my math right and if all pellets are on target so not too shabby so let me get this reset and let's check out some spreads on them all right next thing i'm going to do is check the spread of these things at this same distance i've got this thing exactly measured for at six feet from the end of this muzzle to that paper target down there so i'm gonna put two rounds down there right in the center i'll do one single and then just squeeze one off pretty quickly on the double right after it so let's see what the spread of these these might be pretty decent out of this longer barrel well let's see what we get y'all All right, not too bad at all. Let's measure that and see what we got. All right, let's check out what we got right quick. So I'll just tell you now, I'm definitely surprised at how tight it is. I figured it'd be a lot bigger spread. I expected some maybe even off the paper, but this isn't really too bad. Now, granted, it's only six feet, but still not as, not as bad as I thought it would be. So we should have 10 pellets here. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's probably two. So there would be nine, 10, and that's a wad, I'm imagining, because it didn't go through the 
the board and the other wad might have went through there or might have bounced off somewhere so that's all 10 pellets accounted for and as for the group size you got 4.55 inches off of two shots now if i just took one it may have been tighter granted but uh, i figure if you're squeezing off two that's probably going to be more of a realistic situation anyway so 4.55 inches out of that little judge at six feet that would definitely be a potent little package at that distance all right i got us moved out to exactly five yards now i'm going to do the same thing i did at that six footer i'm going to do one shot single and then a follow-up double kind of fast not real fast because I, I do want to get an idea of the actual spread of these without my error but i think this double tapping is more is kind of more realistic to me anyway but uh like i said this is five yards so right about the size of an average room all the way across the room is if you can kind of guesstimate that so this is probably about the furthest i would run or rely on this personally well let's see what this does first i shouldn't say that yet let's see what let's see what happens here all right i think i pulled that a little bit left that was probably partly me but the group should still be pretty decent let's check it out and see what we got all right let's check this one out y'all obviously it opened up a whole lot more than it did at six feet but still at five yards this is better than i thought it would be again all of them are on the paper here we got 10 again so we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then you got one wad here and one wad here so all of them accounted for again at five yards i don't think that's too bad at all and that was with my error put into the game here all this is favoring left i'm sure that's me doing that but as far as the group i would say that's pretty accurate even with that second double action now as you can see i did have to break out the old tape measure for this one but right here is our furthest and that's eight and a quarter inches so eight and a quarter inches at five yards that would absolutely still get the job done right there so i gotta say so far this stuff's looking pretty good but they ain't but one way to find out how good it really is let me get this stuff reset and y'all know what time it is all right y'all it's jury duty jelly time we're back up here at six feet i'm gonna put two rounds into the gel like i've been doing this time i'm gonna do them both single action though i don't want to miss my gel and blast the table and i just wanted to take all my air out of it basically so let's see what we get here with two rounds out of the good old judge all right I guess I could have went and put the cloth back, but I don't think there was no sense. It didn't seem to really care about that cloth. Let's go check out and see what we got. All right, let's check out what we got down here, y'all. I can tell you right now, just from first glance, this is just absolute nastiness right here. This stuff just, <laughs> I mean, this stuff went to work. Uh, I had to pull you back because a couple of them decided to, to go to distance down here into the second block. But most of them, the majority of them stopped in this first block. Now, from what I can count, we've got eight pellets in the block here and one of the wads. One of the wads is actually right here stuck in the denim. So it caught one of the wads and one of them went on through. And like I say, I can count eight pellets and one exit is right here and i don't know where the uh tent one would have gone i don't see any other places where it kind of veered off nothing on the table nothing on the board now it could have went high it's really hard to say but again as far as what we did catch it looks really nice to me down here now it's interesting to see these pellets they acted differently some of them stayed almost completely round like this one that went the distance it looks like it's really still nice and round but these other ones that went shorter they're flattened out you can tell and they got a a lot more disruption because of that flattening so um, i'm wondering what caused that is it the, the way they hit the cloth the way they hit the other pellets it's it's almost impossible to say but there's a definite difference between the pellets and the performance between them so we'll do some measuring here and then i'll pick you up and show you the rest of them since it's easier to see so uh, i'll just go through them real quickly we'll start with the longest and go down so this one here is 20 and three quarters the one that exited ex exited at 20 and a half this one is 17 and a half uh 16 on that one then you got 11 and a half 13 9 7 and a quarter 
and eight and a half and i believe that was all of them there so here's a little closer look at some of the tracks this glare is really wreaking havoc today and i can't really put my tarp up because it's so windy but i think you get a good picture there a couple of them went down there at the bottom one of them that one's hiding down there almost into the wood on the bottom it might have touched it then you see that one there is really nice and flattened out and look at the disruption because of that and then you go up here there's some really nice disruption there and if you follow it you'll see that project tile there is flattened out but then again like i say when you come down here to this one you can obviously see it is definitely not flattened out so like i said there is definitely some differences in the performance between the separate pellets all right y'all let's check out these pellets that we recovered so it was eight of them that was in the jail again like i say i can tell where the ninth one went out but i have no idea where the tenth one went i'm assuming it went a little high and just missed the jail but as far as these eight like i said you can definitely tell a difference in performance you got some of them that are something like this just completely flattened out mashed down and then you got this one here this one was the one that went the furthest it's barely even expanded i hope y'all can see good enough with this crazy glare this glare and this wind has really been fighting today but as you can see that one just barely flattened out in a couple little places so that one went way on down there and then again you got stuff like this so uh this one and this one were the two that went the furthest and you can tell it's definitely why is because they just stayed mostly round very very little deformation out of those all right let's get some measurements on these things right quick before i get blown away out here so what i'll do is measure the first one of these little pellets here and then i'll just go down the line and stack them all up so this first one is 67.2 which is about what i remember them being from that two and a half so once we add the next one here we got 134.8 401.2268.4 and then with the last one added we've got a total of 537.0 grains so 537 grains we sent down here into this gel with two rounds so that right there is not too shabby at all now if we would have kept those other two uh these are looking like they're all around 67 or so so you're adding what another 134 to that so you'd be at almost 700 grains of lead from both of these rounds now as far as the size on them there's really nothing going on but i'll measure a few anyway let's start with this round one i'll try to get it on the round so you're looking at what 362 355 so that was the one that pretty much stayed round except for a couple flat spots and then ones like this one that flattened out really nicely you're looking at about 444 so you definitely got some expansion because of that flattening on them another one of the flat ones here you got 434 this one here 446 so the ones that did get mashed down and flattened did pretty nicely and like i said you could definitely tell a difference in the gel from those so there you have it y'all the three inch remington 410 triple alt buck definitely a nice little pile of lead sitting there from just two shells um from what i can see here like i said short range the six foot even out to that five yards there's no doubt in my mind this is a potent little package now once you get out further uh that spread's gonna start opening up you don't know how many of these pellets are going to get where you want them to get that's the one big downside from these judges these things are fully rifled barrels so these pellets do not want to stay together just by nature of that rifling they're wanting to spin out of there and go in a big whirlwind and get wider and wider and wider as they get further so you're definitely struggling to keep these things together but like i said these distances we worked with out here today i didn't see any problem at all out of these all right, y'all, I'm calling it right there for what I think was a very interesting 410 test. I don't think it's any secret that these Taurus Judd revolvers are looked at as a meme out there a lot of times. And granted, they're probably not the best choice for defensive use. But out here today, I think this one did a fine job with this triple alt buck. Like I said, one of the main problems of these judges is the fact that the barrels are fully rifled like that. So when you run these shot shells, again, they're just spinning. And the, the further they go, the bigger that spiral gets and the, the pattern just opens up you saw how much difference there was even just going from the six feet out to that five yards that i moved now even at that 15 feet though in my opinion that's still plenty tight enough grouping out there to do the job that this thing was meant to do but let me know what y'all's thoughts are on it those y'all out there who do have a judge what barrel length do you have what kind of shells do you run it or, or do you run the 45 cold in it let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are if you did enjoy the video take a second to hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel and make sure you got your notifications on so you don't miss anything that i upload
upload. Y'all check out those affiliate links in the video description. If you shop through Amazon, hit my storefront link up down there first. You go right through Amazon like normal from there and anything you buy after that, I get a kickback from them towards the channel. Same deal with those Axle links. If you're looking for some really nice ear pro, hit up those links down there and you'll save a pile of money instead of going straight to their site. Once again, I appreciate all my Range Gang members and every single one of y'all out there for supporting the channel like y'all do. Tons of really good stuff coming y'all's way, so be on the lookout. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see you soon.